recording this this mathematics webinar is solely conducted by the mathematics pedagogy group so over to the mathematics pedagogy group uh, for conducting this seminar so let us have the introduction of our resource person um, professor indra rana and i invite my student to introduce sir uh, so i invite nissi to introduce sir for us this evening nissi yes thank you ma'am greetings to all on behalf of the mathematics department of st xavier's institute of education i welcome the mathematics talents from different parts of the world and the notable academic scholars who have gathered today it is a privilege and honor to have dr indra ke rana today as a resource person he is an adjunct professor at the department of mathematics iit bombay he is a man with vision and action he has completed his phd in the year 19 1979 from iit and has published four books yes we see hello we can't hear you can you hear me yeah yes we see we can't hear you Ma'am, were you able to hear my starting part? Yeah. Okay. Someone else can continue then. Yes, he is an adjunct professor at the Department of Mathematics, IIT Bombay. He is a man of vision and action. He has completed his PhD in the year 1979 from IIT and has published four books in the field of mathematics. He has also received four prestigious awards for his excellent work in the field of mathematics and teaching. Various interactive web resources and four online courses through MOOC programs have been introduced by Dr. Indra. Along with his research in the IIT institution, he has also dedicated his life for math education and activities. 400 plus teachers have been influenced by his activities his vision is to train 300 plus teachers in maharashtra and to establish a center for math education thank you sir for joining with us we welcome you once again over to sir before sir begins i would request all the participants to kindly mute your mics if you have any question you can unmute but please don't disturb by keeping your mics on thank you and uh, over to sir Okay. Yeah. I hope uh, everybody. Good evening, everybody. And I hope my screen is visible to everybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, to, to begin with, let me clarify one thing. Uh, that i am not a junk professor at iit bombay i have fully retired so you can see i have written here ex iit bombay so uh, i am not a faculty member or junk faculty at iit bombay now so with that uh, correction let me uh, begin when uh, vinny asked me to uh, talk about uh, teaching and learning uh, in the present scenario uh she said after pandemic then i thought it is uh, not after pandemic pandemic is not yet over uh, as a beautiful ad by some company says hathi nikal gaya hai magar uski pooch abhi baki hai so still uh, we are getting about 8000 uh, new covid cases per day in india so uh, the virus is not fully gone of course uh, the effectiveness has reduced and uh, so uh, be there with the caution um, and that's why i have uh, written as teaching and learning of mathematics not after pandemic but in endemic so this period 
uh, by professionals, which is called endemic law, end of the pandemic. And of course, what I'm going to say is valid uh, for uh, more uh, time to come. It's a more of a strategy uh, which will help us to come out of various problems. So let me thank Vinny for asking me because uh, I knew that there are problems uh, about uh, teaching and learning or education as such uh, because of uh, the COVID. And uh, it has caused a lot of upheavals, but uh, the extent to which it has caused uh, to measure it quantitatively, uh, it gave me an opportunity for that. So uh, in some part of my lecture today, I will go through those uh, data about uh, what has happened. And then uh, in the later half of my lecture, I will talk about the possible solutions. All right. So uh, and learning of maths in endemic and beyond. So let me begin with uh, when did we start this? The date was 24th of March, 2020, when suddenly overnight uh, there was a lockdown uh, in India and uh, that changed almost every aspect of our life. Teaching and learning of maths in many kind of years. Let me begin with the... Somebody has switched on the YouTube channel. So please, the YouTube channel, you can view it later on. Uh, and Okay, All right. So let me continue. The date was 24th of March, the date when first lockdown was imposed uh, for the safety of everybody. And uh, it changed everything. Almost every part of our life has changed. How we work, this is how we started working. Everybody was working from home, right? So this, this uh, gives the scenario of uh, working from home. how we interact, the social distancing was the norm of the day. And this uh, cartoon beautifully uh, says what is uh, social distancing at that time, okay? Our eating habits changed. Everybody was keen on uh, getting a healthy diet to improve the immune system so that uh, you don't catch the virus and so on. So overall, our eating habits uh, changed. Uh, so the breakfast, it improved by about uh, 33 to 44%. Lunch, it changed from 18 to 31, and dinner from 21 to 33. There is pre-COVID and uh, since COVID. Okay. And uh, advantages are, uh, the, the effect is we're still continuing with those good habits. The personal hygiene, we want started washing our hands frequently, covering our nose when sneezing, avoiding touching eyes, and uh, trying to disinfect everything. So these are the various things that we do it. But the most uh, uh, crucial one to us was how teaching and learning changed. Uh, the teaching became online from home, and students are learning on their laptops or uh, phones. So let us just uh, uh, quick data. As per UN report, school closure have impacted around 247 million children which are enrolled in elementary and uh, secondary educations uh, in India. This is only, only for India, okay? 247 uh, million. Uh, Teachers were straight away asked to jump into uh, something called uh, a new method of teaching called online teaching, okay? Or distance learning modalities. There was no guidance given to teachers. There was no training available to them how to implement it. It was like a child being thrown into the water and asked to swim, okay? So uh, teachers all over the globe were chiefly ill-equipped to hold uh, this continuity in education and to get used to this new methodology of uh, teaching. T -t uh, it was almost like teaching to a virtual uh, community of students. All teachers, educators, sports staff, family and caregivers 
but the beauty is all of them rose to the challenge and rallied to provide social, emotional, and academic support to our students that was needed. So that was the beauty of it, uh, that we all uh, joined together, create resources, and uh, uh, do the needful. So uh, here is uh, a small uh, appreciation of teachers. Not all heroes wear caps. Many of them are uh, teachers. Teachers did a wonderful job, and uh, I'm really happy that teach, uh, teaching community came up to the uh, need of the hour. Um, now, after many weeks of uh, distance learning, which was challenging to children, parents, and teachers, and schools started re reopening in September 2021, right? So after about uh, two years uh, of close schooling, schools started reopening partially, uh, slowly, and so on. Both parents and teachers were very happy. Teachers and, uh, and parents were very happy that our children will be going to school and then none of them wanted that uh, they should come back to distance learning. The joy of covering books with brown papers, new school bags, polishing canvas shoes, buying new raincoats, sharing stories of occasion, etc. These were the joys of uh, <clears throat> joys that uh, students uh, have, and all were looking forward to it. Middle grade students emphasize how important it is physically present in the classroom. The physical presence is important to interact with friends and to share opinions about different subjects with each other and their teachers. So this is the importance of uh, offline teaching going to school. Uh, let me uh, show you a small uh, clip uh, prepared on this by one of the, I think it's the McKenzie group, which prepared this. So let us, uh, just a small clip, how students uh, feel about it. My school is close to that path, but it's closed from the end. I don't like to study alone at home. I wish school would open again. Keep all the masks on and keep the other side of the other side. So that because of COVID-19, because of COVID-19, मेरा स्कूल फिर से बंद ना हो। मेरा स्कूल अब फिर से खुल चुका है। अब मैं वापस से अपने दोस्तों के साथ बैठकर साफ और मजेदार खाना खा पाऊंगी। कोविड के चलते बाबा की नौकरी चली गई और मेरा स्कूल भी। बाबा कह रहे थे कि मेरी शादी करवा देंगे। लेकिन मैं तो पढ़ना चाहती हूँ। काश बाबा को उनकी नौकरी वापस मिल जाए और मुझे मेरा स्कूल मिले। क्लास वन से लेकर क्लास थ्री हो गया, मैं स्कूल ही नहीं जा पाया। लेकिन पता है अपना स्कूल खुल जाएगा और मैं अपने दोस्त से बहुत कुछ करने वाला हूँ। मेरे अब्बू मजदूर थे। कोविड नाइनटीन के चलते हमें गांव वापस आना पड़ा। लेकिन यहाँ � तो कहीं मुझे भी मजदूरी ना करनी पड़े। लेकिन अब्बू ने बताया कि स्कूल फिर से खुल रहे हैं। अब मैं बहुत खुश हूँ। स्कूल बंद हो गए, तो पढ़ाई भी बंद हो गई। घर में सिर्फ एक ही फोन है, वो भी माँ-बाबा ने भाई को दे दिया। पर मैं बहुत खुश हूँ, क्योंकि स्कूल फिर से खुल रहे हैं। फिर से दोस्त जब मैं क्लास फोर में था, मुझे सब कुछ समझ जाता था। लेकिन अब ऑनलाइन क्लासेस में मैथ्स और साइंस की कुछ चीजें समझ ही नहीं आती हैं। काश जल्दी स्कूल खुले और मैं अपने टीचर से सब कुछ समझ पाऊं। कोविड नाइनटीन की वजह से मम्मी घर से बाहर भी नहीं निकलने देती थी। कहीं स्कूल हमेशा के लिए बंद हो गया तो now that children are going back to school, let us do our bit to help them start learning and reading again. Let this generation of children not be the lost generation. All of us have an important part to play. On this World Children's Day, join UNICEF in creating safe and inclusive environment for children to be back in school 
and continue learning and having fun. So I think it's a beautiful clip. In a short clip, a lot of problems were raised. And uh, of course, uh, there is a hope in that that after the schools reopen, we will, uh, the problems will be solved, which were raised due to the pandemic. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, get an uh, update on from the participants present in this uh, webinar now. Um, how, uh, how do they feel about uh, their experiences? So let me, uh, this is a, a link I'm putting into the, into the chat box. Please click on the link. Okay, and if you have a uh, camera uh, on mobile phone, you can scan this QR code, you'll be taken to this uh, site and uh, you'll be uh, posing your uh, problems there. Uh, please keep your mouth, uh, um, keep your mic uh, shut. So please go to this website and vote. So let me see if I can open this uh, website and uh, see what is your reaction. And, uh, So this is, uh, I'm uh, looking at a, yeah. So people have already uh, seen the site and uh, they're voting. So there are four questions. I would like you to choose uh, one or more anyway. Uh, it was very difficult uh, for online teaching for you. It was difficult, but you got used to it. Uh, it was a bit difficult, but I had some exposure earlier, so I felt comfortable. And some of uh, about uh, one person feels I had no difficulty in all uh, teaching. So 31 people have, uh, 34 people have uh, shown their opinion. So I think we are more than uh, probably uh, about 100 or 94 people. Uh, So I would just give a few minutes more for people to please. It is a, I'm just showing you a one way of conducting a quiz um, online. So this is very useful in uh, teaching uh, any subject or more, more mathematics. So um, so please do uh, what. So once you finish this one slide, I will give you the other slide uh, for voting. So in this uh, maximum number of uh, participants uh, out of 54, more than 50% uh, feel they had a difficulty in the beginning, but slowly uh, we got used to it. We learned how to teach online and we uh, did the job. Okay, so I think uh, it's already uh, 60%. So let me uh, give you slide two. So this is slide two. Uh, are you able to see the slide two and uh, log in and what? Hello. Yes, good. So already there is a response. What people are responding? Good. We can see, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. We can see. Yeah. So please, uh, everybody, yeah. fill up the response and submit so that uh, we know that what is the problem and probably we can say some solutions are the same. So the first question says, 
my students have gaps in their learning of last year means the last academic year uh, which was in the pandemic or uh, last two years of the pandemic which were taught online students have gaps uh, in that learning and as a teacher i find it difficult to fill the gaps from the previous school year and teach the current curriculum so the problem is there are gaps so how to teach the current curriculum so if we have faced that difficulty uh, then you can click that uh, some schools have started extra remedial classes in extra timings so if that is the case if your school have done that so you can uh, so this is uh, um, this is the problem faced by the students this is the problem faced by the teachers and uh, this is uh, the remedy uh, that being proposed by uh, some of the schools and uh, education system so uh, i think once again uh, uh, all three are very instructive uh, that about 28 persons have said that um, students have gaps so that is a reality and uh, it's also a reality that we don't know how to fill up those gaps and uh, some remedy the schools have started Um, remedial courses okay all right so let me uh, go over to the so this is what we were uh, so as a outcome of this uh, short quiz we have seen that there is nothing else to do so it is zoom it is not webinar so are you an audio or not Hello. Somebody has a problem. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there is a problem that uh, during pandemic <clears throat> there was a difficulty in teaching online, and as a result of uh, that, probably because it was not as uh, effective as offline teaching, the students had learning gaps, and now when the new session has started. uh the students with learning gaps are there in the class so how to uh, rectify that and go ahead so that is a, a real problem and this is uh, you you have agreed and you have voted for these three reasons okay right so the relief being back to school was short lived the opening triggered a panic how to gain the loss right okay so uh, the the pleasure of going back to school was good for uh, students in the sense that they had their pleasure of meeting their friends talking to them eating food together and uh, so on but when it came to learning they had difficulty okay and uh, there was teachers realized there was something called the lost time or this is also now started being called as the loss learning loss and that was because of uh, the closure of the schools so the general term learning loss which i'll be referring to again and again refers to any specific or general loss of knowledge and skills or to reversals in academic process most commonly due to extended gap or discontinuities in a sudden in a student's education summer vacation is also during summer vacation also there is a learning loss but we uh, teachers give uh, uh, homeworks for summer so that the students keep uh, learning so here is a observation that while learning loss can manifest in a wide variety of ways for a wide variety of reasons what are the ways uh, examples by which learning loss can come it could be summer break interrupted formal education because of one reason or the other the returning of dropouts some dropout students they rejoin the school so for them there is a learning loss uh, school absence the uh, student has been absent from the school for because of medical reasons or some other reasons it could be because of ineffective teaching so all this could be uh, the reasons for the learning loss 
there is uh, some slide uh, about a survey being uh, conducted, which has been conducted by many, many surveys are available online by many agencies, right? But uh, I just picked up one to illustrate that the problem is real and it is everywhere. Green says about 38% in 2019, 38% of uh, students were at par, okay, on the grade level. 18 were below grade level and uh, uh, well below grade level were 44 in 19, kindergarten. But if you look at 20, the, it has jumped to 31, okay, uh, above grade level above grade level from 38 to 31. So that is down 19% uh, has gone below grade level and 50% is well below grade level. So if we look at the last one, the grade three from uh, above uh, grade level at about or above grade level from 57, it has come down to 52. So everywhere there is a drop. Uh, and this has almost remained the same below grade level almost remains the same but well below grade level from 26 to 31. So there is a learning loss. This is uh, one of the countries, one of the surveys. I have just taken uh, the picture from it. Uh, all the government, all the agencies like UNICEF has done it, World Health, uh, World, <clears throat> uh, UNICEF has done it, World Bank has done it. Almost all uh, teaching and learning uh, agencies, ASAR has done it. and. Uh, and almost all the surveys indicate the same. So what is the remedy? Uh, in India, I will talk about the Indian remedies most of the time. Uh, a mission Bunyad was started by the Delhi government. Uh, I don't know how effective it is and how, but the data says a daily session of 45 minutes for basic math and an assessment conducted every working Saturday. So you teach 45 minutes every day and you assess on Saturdays and Sundays and uh, the progress of the catch-up sessions. This is mainly uh, on the basis of uh, uh, the revision by the students. The students revise the academic concepts of the previous classes and there are worksheets given, tests given to them. So this is one of the remedies, Mission Bunyad. Under, uh, under this initiative in April to June, students of the government and the municipal corporation, the new schools, have shown 20 to 30 percent improvement. That is a claim made by them. Uh, how much the claim is true, one uh, wonders about that. Government plans to extend this scheme further. Uh, government of Chhattisgarh has launched something called bridge courses. So, uh, and almost every state has done something about it. So, if you want to learn about uh, how states are managing uh, the data, uh, you can. Uh, Shall I put this uh, website in the chat box in case somebody wants to go? Where is the chat box? Uh, chat. Where is chat? So I want, just want to put it so that in case somebody wants to later on or now wants to look at have the various uh, uh, remedies given by uh, the state governments. So I will not talk about this. Let me go ahead. You can do, see it later on because that is available uh, for you. All right. Here is a, a report on learning loss and uh, in the gaps in learning. A report was presented to Rajya Sabha uh, in central government. And that is available on this site. Okay, so I will put that also in the chat box so that in case you want to have a look at it, you can have a look at it. It's a PDF document, quite long, and uh, you can see. Summarize what are the possible things uh, which I have been able to dig out from these reports. So uh, in <clears throat> intensive bridge courses and accelerated learning programs, uh, that is a suggestion given. What has been done, I don't know, but these suggestions are 
should be developed in uh, consultation with experts in the field to make up the learning loss, okay? And bring students to the level of the current class. Learning outcomes subjectivized should be assessed by regularly conducting tests, multiple choice question quizzes, and remedial measures taken through intense customized personal remedial. All these are suggestions given, and they are very difficult to implement. My feeling is that because already students are burdened with a lot of unit tests, class tests, and we add up more tests on them. Uh, that will add to the misery of the students. That is my feeling. Of course, there is extra classes. Uh, why not add extra classes? Uh, curtailment of uh, vacations, assigning expert leaders for personalized coaching, parental engagement, peer group, and all these things uh, will again add to the problem of students rather than solving the problem because extra classes means Students have to stay extra in the classroom, okay? And uh, vacations, if they are cut, vacations is the period where students are given a chance to be away from school and learn something other than uh, the regular classroom thing, overall development, that will be gone. And so all these are suggested and are being implemented by many of the uh, uh, schools uh, and state governments but I don't think they really give any, um, they are really uh, effective. They also say that uh, senior class students should be advised to take up the role of mentors and take classes for the junior. But again, that uh, who will ask the senior students to take up, how will you select the students and why they should spend their time on uh, for teaching uh, junior students. Special instruction material, worksheets, workbooks may be uh, created again, once again. These are, unless these instruction material and worksheets are uh, uh, shared under a facilitator, giving them as such is of no use. After all, uh, all the material of the previous years is available in the textbook. You can always refer to a textbook and say that chapter you should revise. Mandatory helpline centers for every subject to clear the doubts. Again, uh, we know how these helpline centers work, whether students will come there or not. How will you ensure that the students uh, who have difficulty will come to that? So all these are suggestions given in the various reports. Uh, some of these things are operative and are functional and are effective in some of the countries where the class strength is a bit small. So where, uh, for example, a primary section uh, has only 20 students, so the teacher can cater to almost every student. But uh, our scenario in India is much more uh, difficult. We have a bigger number of uh, students in the classes. And uh, right, so uh, all the sessions, I'm not saying these are all theoretical ones. They are being tried out uh, by various uh, countries, various schools uh, in India also. More funding formative assessments by chatbot. Okay, that is one of the methods of formative assessments. Okay and targeted uh, instructions, then one can be given. So these are all some more programs uh, that is possible. Somebody uh, also gave a suggestion, we should, uh, uh, so basically additional learning time and instructional uh, solutions. On the extended school years, schools can start academic year earlier, again, putting pressure on the students, and uh, this will put pressure. Most of the studies have, are inclusive. Many have tried to do that, but there is no uh, evidence which is conclusive in saying that this extended school year uh, will work. So this is also not a very good remedy. Extending school periods and days, again, uh, I think um, that remedial class that we have talked about 
effectively uh, what they have lost in a year you can't cover it in a short while uh, in a uh, very short span of a remedial class activities connect to uh, standards from the year ago and aim to uh, have students master content from the past year again that requires time okay additional learning time is most effective how will you know then in the additional uh, classes, uh, will you make attendance compulsory in the additional classes? Why you should do that? Okay. Um, so that is another issue. And one more issue is there that cost of uh, additional uh, school days, when you are asking teachers to take additional school days, additional uh, hours, will they be paid for that? After all, teachers are also doing a job they also have a limited time for their own life and for school life. So will you be, uh, will there be additional funds made available by the state or the center for arranging uh, these uh, additional uh, hours? Uh, you will be surprised in many uh, countries abroad, funds are being made available for such uh, activities. So I don't know in India, I have no idea. Uh, whether students, teachers are being paid extra for the extra. Uh, if somebody has an idea, you can unmute and say, yes, your school is paying for the extra hours that you are conducting. Anybody wants to respond to the last question? No? Okay. So let us uh, go ahead. Uh, also suggested is that the curriculum may be realigned in some way. So there was a committee uh, set up by, uh, I think, uh, under the headship of uh, Manjul Bhargava, a well-known mathematician, and uh, also interested in math education at uh, all levels, observed that authorities need not wait for the completion of the curriculum revision exercise to start helping students so this is this session is very welcome session, uh, and it is this suggested curriculum alignment that meant horizontal alignment uh, and vertical alignment. Uh, horizontal alignment essentially means that uh, the teachers keep in mind uh, the continuity of the curriculum as per that particular grade. So as the grades uh, in the grade in the grade itself what is dependent on what, what is the prerequisites. So that is alignment, horizontal alignment. And the vertical alignment is something more crucial, but more difficult that uh, the teachers from the earlier grades and the lower grades have regular meetings and see what uh, the students are missing. Uh, and probably uh, sometimes they can rearrange uh, the students that the students of upper level can come attend to classes of the lower level and revise their course curriculum. So this is called the vertical. So vertical alignment is uh, alignment of the curriculum along the grades up to down and horizontal is in the grade itself. Uh, another uh, remedy is what is called redemption. So that is what I have, we have already talked about. That is called uh, redemption or remedial classes. So again, uh, we have seen that this uh, uh, does not, many, uh, many of the teachers said that uh, they are holding remedial classes. So uh, would someone of the teachers like to share their views about the remedial classes they are organizing? Because it's not only uh, you are the teacher in the classroom at school level, so you are a better expert to give me the feedback rather than the reports from the web or otherwise. So I would appreciate if some teacher says whether they, if he or she has conducted remedial classes and whether it has helped in some way or the other so that other teachers can also take care of all such things. Will somebody like to say something? 
I think a large number of teachers said that remedial classes. So, uh, oh, sir, in the uh, internship schools where we go, there uh, some schools had conducted bridge courses, and then when the students were not faring well, they had uh, the remediation classes. It's like you know, um, some of the concepts were retaught. That is what some of the teachers said. Yeah, but what is the outcome after the remedial class was done? Okay, so that I am not aware of, sir. Yeah, so the idea is we know the problem, we can diagnose the problem, we have ways of diagnosing the problem, but uh, what is uh, the outcome of the remedy that we are suggesting? Whether that so uh, Shubhangi is suggesting that play mathematical games which will reinforce the concept and appreciation of knowledge. That's good. So that is again uh, not about the remedial course. This is an action, remedial action we can take. So instead of giving uh, worksheets and so on, she is suggesting that uh, we should have a gamification of uh, the previous knowledge so that the students play games and while playing games, the concepts are revised. In fact, uh, the whole uh, teaching, if we can make it as a gamification, uh, of teaching the present the content, present year also, that will be great. So that is a great way of uh, teaching concepts. I fully agree, Shobangi. Anybody else would like to say something? Please put in the chat box or say something so that uh, we can. But as such, remedial classes, conventionally, that means either every day the students meet uh, the teacher um, after the class hours or weekly once. So we spend two, three hours in conducting a class and so such things. So I just want to know whether anybody has any uh, outcome of these remedial courses. There are uh, studies uh, done not in India, but abroad. I have some data, but I thought uh, because I'm talking to teachers uh, in India, it will be a good opportunity to listen to their feedback. So if somebody still has something to say, please, otherwise I will go ahead. Okay, so I think uh, for the time being, probably let us go ahead. So the remedial courses have a drawback. Students access to grade level content is delayed. If you are doing a remedial class, students are not understanding something now of the previous year. So if you continue teaching the next one, next year's thing, they will not understand that and they, this will pile up for them. So this is one of the drawbacks of remedial courses. And research I've shown again and again that this does not work. So as I said, I have a lot of data, uh, but what is being, so what is the outcome? So what is being suggested is what is called uh, learning should be accelerated. So it is being suggested by experts and the word over that we should accelerate our uh, learning process. So what does that mean? I will try to explain. And so what is accelerated learning? Okay. Uh, accelerated learning is not simply speeding through the curriculum. It's not as if, uh, if you, it's a train which has to go from one station to another. You quickly go through uh, from one station to another and you're already short of time, so try to finish the curriculum. So that is not what we are looking at, what is accelerated learning mean. It is something else. So this term, uh, this accelerated learning says something different, but it means totally different something. It is a way of thinking just about in-time interventions, the right type of amount of, uh, the right type, and the right amount of support at the right time to fill in the gaps. So it says you, as a teacher, you find that your students have a gap at some point. And uh, you, you can't just go back and revise everything. Okay? So just give those inputs which will help you to go ahead. And then probably uh, the details can be worked out. Uh, or references or worksheets can be given that how do you reinforce these things by going through this uh, worksheets or some, some lectures. 
uh, Akanksha is saying attending remedial classes on the remedial classes, Akanksha Rai is saying that attending remedial classes provides students with more reading and discussion and uh, improved learning skills. I don't deny Akanksha with you because students have more time so they can do more things. But you, either these remedial classes will be held during the lecture, during the uh, uh, periods. That means you'll be eating away your time of uh, uh, the current uh, topics. And if you're doing it uh, later on, um, say weekly or something, then the students are left with those gaps and you cannot teach for that. So either way, remedial classes really don't work because of the time constraint and uh, you want to go ahead. Of course, uh, this additional uh, classes will help. Studies show that students who experienced learning acceleration struggle less. So there is a conclusive evidence about it. That, uh, and learn more than those students who started at the same level, but had so compared to remedial classes, accelerated learning, which means just in time inputs about the right type at right amount of uh, inputs uh, is better than real classes. So that way you spend less time on uh, what you want to uh, get, you remove the gap uh, for the time being, not the detailed way. Of course, you cannot teach the whole in a short while, but you can teach as much as will be enough to go about the next lecture, about the next topic. And of course, there is a strong evidence that learning acceleration successfully provides with the understandings that they need for accessing the grade level content. So this is the um, remedy that is being practiced by many uh, uh, teachers across the globe and the studies uh, they are putting up shows that this is working very well. So let me uh, uh, spend now uh, some time. Uh, I have gone almost uh, halfway of my talk. Um, so let me go ahead a bit and uh, look at what is accelerated learning and uh, how can we sort of implement in our classroom. I think that is what teachers may be interested in. So accelerated learning means recall and get back into the rhythm of learning. That is what in a short line uh, I'm saying. So implementing, uh, so I have tried to take it into steps so that uh, we are able to understand and implement. Step is excellent learning methodology. First of all, the teacher should acquaint in, should know very well uh, the most critical prerequisites and skills the students need to access that level thing. See, if you're going to teach particular content, particular topic uh, in the class, say tomorrow, so you should know what are the prerequisites, right? What are the prerequisites required? You, you, you yourself should know, right? And you should be very well conversant with those uh, prerequisites before you um, go through that. Right. So this is step one. I think you're quite acquainted with the prerequisites. Step two, diagnose students' unfinished learning on prerequisite content. So you should devise a method, devise uh, diagnostic, maybe a diagnostic test, maybe a game, maybe a puzzle, or something that tests whether the students know what uh, skill you think they should be having, okay? And then apply the pre-unit assessment curriculum-based resources, okay? So uh, these assessments should be part of uh, the curriculum uh, system, okay? You should pay not to use the excess uh, knowledge or extra knowledge required for that. No time for that. And step three is once you have diagnosed what are the prerequisites required, in just in time inputs to address unfinished learning on the pre 
So you have diagnosed that for the uh, topic that you're going to choose, uh, that you're going to teach, say uh, next week or tomorrow, uh, you, today you conduct some kind of diagnostic on that, a short one, and it will tell you that give you an indication that students need some inputs uh, on revising those uh, concepts. And then you do the, what is called just in time. So this is a very crucial phase, just time. It is not elaborate remedial class you should conduct. Give inputs that is good enough for them. Okay. So these are the three steps uh, required. Uh, if anybody has a question till now, please ask. Uh, otherwise I will go to some activity mode where we'll be doing examples. Uh, sir, in this, how do you measure the outcomes? Uh, we, where one? So in this accelerated learning steps. The right. Steps, if the you step like, you can, you can, yeah, you can do the diagnostic test again. What I am saying is you can go to step one again, okay, with a different diagnostic uh, uh, test or a quiz or something and see whether the students have understood or not what you wanted to say, right? That is the only way. How, do you, how does a doctor know that um, you went to the doctor saying that, doctor, I have a cough. Doctor says, Teen din ke liye dawai khao, baad mein aake ko dikhana. Right? Yes. So, the doctor has to have a look at it. Mm -hmm. Where the, for the doctor and you have to ask the student, okay, your patient, okay, now open your mouth and show me. Close your throat. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Yes. So this is not a like sometimes you may have to go to step one again and you find that, oh, there are still gaps left. Okay. Maybe you need some more inputs, just in time inputs required. You may have to do that. Okay. That depends on a particular class or particular teacher, particular set of students. Okay. So you can give after giving some hints, some suggestions, okay? Like the doctor, when your throat is upset, he says, right? So along with that, you assume that and allow to do this, so this problem class of this section or something. As a teacher has to design something. Okay? So I will try to give you uh, some inputs on that. Okay. So let me. Uh, I hope my internet stays with me. It is saying that there is a problem with your internet. Anyway, till now everybody is able to hear, you, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so if problem comes, then I will have to say, what do I do about my internet? Suddenly there is a warning coming on my screen saying your internet is some problem. Okay, so I'm starting with the, uh, some activities okay, on, on the process, the way I have suggested the things. So is a primary level, uh, okay, you, you, are, you want to teach anything unlike fractions. Okay. So, uh, is there any primary teacher in the audience? My voice is fever. Okay, so I, what do I do? Let me see if I can change. Just a minute. Huh? Some, is it? Your side problem or is it my side problem? I think my thing says it is good enough. So not my side. Yeah, I think somebody said my voice is cracking. Probably it's there. Uh, so your voice side. is clear. Your voice is clear. Okay, fine. Uh, I don't know. I have lost where I was. Where is my screen gone? Uh, is my screen visible? Yes, yes, we can see. Okay, okay. So let yes, me go ahead. Okay. okay, so let me go ahead. So, uh, according to those three steps, I'm going to do this. So, I was asking, is there any uh, 
is there any teacher uh, of primary level i want to discuss something with the any teacher who doing teaching k to 5 kindergarten to 5 or anybody teaching has taught adding unlike fractions any any teacher yes sir yeah so uh, please uh, when you if you want to teach adding unlike fractions what difficulties normally students face do you have any input for that any observation you would like to share sir in um, converting a like fraction ah okay so the first idea should be converting into like fraction like, like fraction so that is a yes. that is a background knowledge that we expect the students to have right yes okay. so for that we like to have a diagnostic tips so i want to uh, conduct something uh, more like uh, instead of paper pencil you can do it in paper pencil because there is no harm in that so uh, uh, possible diagnostics i want to conduct so i would like everybody to do that okay so please uh, in your uh, okay so let me uh, i'm going to take you outside uh, now this i'm i have put a uh, link in the chat box you click the will be taken somewhere where you will be offered something so please do that so you put the link i am not saying i am not able to that link doesn't work no oh, i i can't see the link yes sir in the so in the chat box no you have not link is not posted in the chat box sir in the chat box i have put a link chat box is not visible so you have not put the link in the chat box please check no i just put okay let me see if we can do it again can you put once again yeah oh okay uh, it has gone to one particular person it has not gone to everybody yeah. okay because it must I, not be for everyone yeah yeah so let me do it for one more yes now we can see now earlier i was interacting with somebody so uh, it went to that person only so where is my classroom how do i access my classroom profile yeah you can see now uh, the link as well as the yes yes you can see i can see uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, participants are already logged in clicked the link and are working on it so there is a puzzle about uh, like fractions so please try to complete that puzzle so riya is already uh, done two steps indu has done uh, reasonably well go ahead akanksha has not yet started so yes akanksha you should be doing that quiz i am asking you to do don't jump ahead okay you are doing the wrong one please come back and do the first one there's a puzzle later on to be done okay if you like you can do both together now you can do both and see let us see the first one is the diagnostic and what uh, kanksha is doing that is called uh, 
So here is task one. Here is so there are two. Okay. Task one is a puzzle and other is creating corrections. Good. So Rajesh, uh, no, Rajeshwari has already completed. Okay. You can go do the next one if you like. Yes, creating uh, equivalent fractions. So second one is to give just in time inputs. So don't know what are like fractions. So probably you'd like to give them an input on that. Okay. What does uh, like fractions or equivalent fractions? Other name given is equivalent fractions. Okay. So it has taken uh, about uh, five minutes for the good students, I would say, those who have already completed the puzzle and uh, people are already on the second one, uh, which is uh, about creating a like puzzle. Okay. What, what we have to do? No, it just, uh, that is the input I want to give. I want to show students what are uh, like fractions. So just go through that and click the arrows so that you, uh, whether it gives you any idea about what are like fractions. Imagine yourself as a student who doesn't know what are like fractions or what are equivalent fractions, whether this applet second one works for you, whether it makes things clear or makes it more clear, clear to what is the equivalent fraction. So that is the input I would like to give to the students. Rather than just saying multiply numerator and denominator be the same number, yeah, but equal to the, uh, the above arrow until the denominator will be the same. Right. So that is a way of uh, giving the same input that multiply numerator and denominator be the same bar in a more interactive way. Right? Right, right. If you give it an algorithm to create equivalent fractions, multiply numerator and denominator. So that is, you want the student to memorize. Of course, we'll do it as you insist, and then uh, you will say, okay, now you can do what I wanted you to do. Okay. So almost uh, everybody has completed. So um, shall we uh, close the, see, this is another thing I want to show you. I have, I have picked up two GeoGebra applets. One is a quiz type that is completing the puzzle, okay? And the second is just in time inputs for the next part, third part of my session that makes students aware or make it clear what is equivalent fractions. And both have been done using GeoGebra, okay? I haven't given it as a classroom. I think I might have spent about, uh, not maybe 15 minutes or 20 minutes on these two applets. Okay. Uh, to diagnose, the first one is to diagnose whether the students have a problem in like fractions or not. If they take a lot of time and if they are not able to complete, then uh, there, there is an issue involved. I should give just in time inputs. And for just in time, in -time inputs is the second uh, uh, that applet that gives. There are many applets I can, one can have. I just wanted to give you a flavor. And all these things are in active way in a GeoGebra classroom setting, right? One can do it provided, of course, internet is available. I think now uh, one uh, plus point of uh, pandemic is that most of the schools, most of the students, internet access, so you can do this kind of things with them. Okay. So uh, let me go back to my slides. Yeah. Yeah, first one is the web browser and second the uh, GeoGebra app. So. Yeah, the, no, both were, uh, 
offer in the Jivanjara class for applets. Okay, let me probably open and show you. Okay. This is the applet uh, I think we had for the diagnostic part. Yeah, this was the applet which was presented to you. So the idea was the student should see that this is one by three and we have to bring in these fractions from there to there and see which is the uh, likely one. Okay, so you can just pick up one and bring it here, bring it here, whichever way you like, whichever place you like, okay, and put it there. So the idea is all these should be put up inside. So if the student knows one by three, what are the possible equivalent fractions? It could be uh, two by six or three by nine. So here is a three by nine, right? If the student knows, so can bring it here. If the student doesn't know, then they will have a problem of bringing it here. So this was the first applet. This is more of a game-like situation created. Okay. Please keep your keep your mic shut. Hello, participants. Please keep your mic shut. Otherwise, I can hear you. What are you telling your students? You can have more such things. Uh, I have some more apps like this. Let me just show you some from more, which I did not bring it to the classroom. For example, this is a paper pencil kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, one by four is equivalent to what? Let the students write down on a piece of paper in there. You can show it and ask them to write it out on themselves. And you want to check what is the answer, then you can ask them to check the answer. Okay. So it's more like paper pencil thing, but you save time in writing down on the board and asking students to copy, right? Ask students to fill in the question marks by the suitable things, right? And you can go over to the next one. For example, this is another one. Okay. So here is the answer. If you want to go, you can go to the next one and you can, okay. So this is uh, the type of things you can do with the interactive way and you can, uh, the idea is to bring uh, uh, the students uh, interest on the topic that is equal and fraction. See, Akanksha, if your mobile screen is not working, I'm sorry, you can try to use uh, YouTube. So this is again something similar to the earlier one, maybe slightly more difficult. So now here you match the both the sides and fill up the gap. So two by three, you should pick up which one you can drag. For example, you can drag it here and this, but that does not match. Zero by three, zero by seven, it matches. So this matches. Now something you should bring two by three. So what you can bring from two by three, okay. From here, you can bring two by three and something. So that is again something similar. So uh, all these resources are not, I am not asking you to create GeoGebra applets for yourself. I didn't create any one of the GeoGebra applets myself. I did not create any one of the GeoGebra applets myself. They were all available on the internet. They were all available on the GeoGebra site. I only have to pick up the right one and maybe change something a bit to make it suitable for myself, okay? So uh, you don't have to understand, uh, you don't have to know GeoGebra to create an applet. You have to know only how to manipulate applets for that, okay? So that is one uh, diagnostic. Once the students have heard, so uh, a diagnostic assessment showed that 12 of the, in a one some class, 20 children of the third grade uh, had skill levels of only second grade, okay? Some students struggled with uh, halves. What is a half of a fraction, okay? How do you cut a fraction into half? 
So that was the difficulty they had and in the equivalent fractions. So in case the teacher has to go back and teaching third grade work for multiple ways, it will take a lot of time. Instead, this kind of uh, things can be brought in. Okay. There is something that I want to, uh, in general, so there is the outcome of the diagnostic test. There is something on fractions uh, which um, discovered it after a long time. Why should I convert fractions to unlike fractions to like fractions? Can somebody tell me? Can one of the participants say what is the reason to convince a student that I should convert unlike fractions to like fractions to add or subtract or to multiply? Sir, uh, to make easy because uh, if uh, denominator is same, it is easy to add. Yeah, it is easy for you to say add numerator. Yeah, yeah, sir. Right? So it is yeah. algorithm. Becomes, it is only algorithm that becomes easy to operate. You are only on the algorithm. You are not elaborating on the understanding of the student. No, sir, because uh, by converting into like fraction, uh, this is the proper way. No, no, to... that is the proper way. That is the proper way what we have been told, right, in the previous class. Yes, sir. Right? To, con to make equivalent fractions, then only you can do some, right? But why should I convert it into equivalent fractions? What, what things makes it easier? Any other teacher would like to give an input? Yes, I want to take out one by four from by two. We equal. Very good. That is more closer to what we want to say. Visualizing the parts the same of total unit is easier. Good. That's where. So, yeah. May I? Uh, yeah. Here, the concept of uh, unit and uh, the entire thing would be explained well. <laughs> Yeah, we should like explain the parts, parts and yeah. Well said. We should, what example I would like to give? For example, if I give students uh, have come across three ones for four ones is equal to seven. Right? Students, somebody's mic is working. Please, the mic. Is it okay that? If I give the problem to students saying add three apples and apples, they will have very easily seven apples. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can sort of, I am now only in a more like a class kind of a thing. Okay. Now, can you add three apples and four bananas? If I want a student to add three apples and four bananas, will a student be able to do that? No, sir. Yes, the answer will be uh, seven fruits. Seven, I didn't say, I said three apples, three apples and four bananas. Where no, does sir. The, where do the things come? No, it is uh, fruits, seven fruits, but so there will be seven fruits. Yes, so if the question was three, addition. Three, three fruits plus four fruits is equal to seven fruits. I can't have three apple four, yeah, four bananas. So now you see the unit is coming into picture. Now you see the unit coming into picture. Okay. So let us uh, come to our fractions. I want to add three by four and uh, three by eight. The only thing we have to tell the students is the denominator indicates the unit. The denominator indicates the unit. So 3 by 4 and 3 by 8. Okay. They are four parts of 3. These are eight parts of 3. So units are not same. How do I bring the unit same? Now keep in mind that example of apples, I want to bring the unit same. How do I bring, make the unit same? Unit is the denominator, right? So if I make the one, 
same what i will do by taking lcm it is you can make it 6x and 3x now the units are same is it okay now uh, this thing is same as saying 6x and this is 3x the total is 18 so now i can bring in that algorithm that this is equal to so probably this is the input i give to my student for i think somebody is mike is giving a lot of problem i don't know whose mic is it is it ravi kaushal now it is not there yeah now it is there so ravi kaushal i think you are giving lot of problem probably please, please keep it shut till you want to come okay okay sir please because it is giving lot of disturbance otherwise everybody so is it clear what i input i am giving it to you so we uh, we rarely give this kind of simple examples uh, inputs so this is just in time input i would like to give it to the uh, students for on uh, go for creating a applications you can have geojobra applets if i i will just quickly show you one or two so that uh, which will uh, for example i want to 8 by 9 i want to create uh, equivalent multiply 6 numerator denominator okay if i want i can change it so i can i can um, multiply by 2 divide uh, denominator by 2 in 8 why are they giving me same so visually if you want to say show that the same part right this is what we diagram we show to students this is uh, 8 by 9 and this is 16 by 18 Are the same, are same not? I will move this, okay. And that should at least vision saying that him or her that these are the same part. So these are these are the kind of uh, things we should bring in for uh, students. Oh, sorry, I think I close everything. I will close this. Uh, I think I close my presentation also probably. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have done one example fully with you. Okay, on the three parts. So these are the just in time inputs we will give. If you like, one can go on to um, creating what is half of an. Um, Fraction. One can have a applet for that, and then you can go on to your addition and subtraction, thematic of unlike fractions. So, shall we? Uh, any questions till now? Want to ask? Or shall we go ahead? Let me, sir. What is the role of higher mathematics like algebra and? topology in practical life i think you are asking a very different question to me uh, what is the role of higher mathematics like algebra and topology in practical life i strongly say yes to uh, attend lectures at that clinic uh, i think i probably To everyone, see, there is a uh, every week we have every Saturday normally we have a lecture. Uh, there is a um, series of lectures under uh, what is called Math Clinic, where we uh, give uh, ask experts to come and lecture on various things. Uh, some of the things questions you have in your mind what are the uses of such things what are the applications for example last week we had one lecture by professor sudhir gorpade 
from IIT Bombay, who gave illustrations how algebra is used in coding theory. Okay. How algebra is used in coding theory. So one would never thought, probably some of people would have never thought that algebra can be used. Algebra is so how report is not working, that is not my problem. Probably you should uh, search for Rajasabha presentation or send me a mail, I'll send you a link for that uh, Rajasabha presentation, okay? Anyway, so somebody asked a question, who was it who asked the question about higher mathematics? What is the role of, uh, is it, who is it? Name, I for, I'm not getting the name. Al, 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 somebody? Somebody asked the question, what is the role of higher mathematics in algebra, like algebra and topology in life? No, that message so, was sent to, you, sent to you personally because I can't see it in the chat. Yeah, somebody by the name ALKN. Akanksha Rai. Is Akanksha Rai there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So Akanksha, please send me a mail on my email. I'll send you to the lectures we are having. Okay. My uh, email I at um, participants, please avoid uh, sending personal messages. Please write to everyone so that everyone knows. Yeah. That, you know? Yeah, please don't type messages, please. Very good session. I I respond back thinking I have given it to everybody. Okay, here is my email. So if you have anything outside the present uh, topic of discussion, please send me a mail. I will try to respond. Okay. Okay. So do that. Yeah. So let us come back to uh, the present in inputs. So anything on the present uh, example, anybody wants to ask, please ask, otherwise I'll go to the next example. No, nobody has a question, let me go to. So this was adding and subtracting, unlike uh, fractions, one can have a geometry. Let, I'll just quickly show you, probably that will motivate you to do such things. Have your design your uh, classes according to this. So one by two plus one by three numerator. So what should be next step after having given those inputs? I want to bring the unit same. So I should make it same. So three by six plus three by six. So if we add, right? So that gives. Oh, hello, sir. Yes. One of the YouTube participant has a question. Yes. How to maintain academic standards in each and every topic of a lesson? How to maintain? Yes, sir. How to maintain academic standards in each and every topic of a lesson? Uh, first of all, the question is not very clear to me. Uh, probably uh, the question means that how to maintain certain standard which you have set for yourself, right? As a standard, right? So there is no universal standard which everybody should try to maintain, okay? The standard is your aim is that students of your class should understand that particular topic, okay? If that particular topic is that they should understand and are able to uh, maintain, uh, able to do arithmetic of unlike fractions, then the standard would be go to the diagnostic remove the uh, hindrances and then do the topic with some examples. So that will be the standard, okay? Right. Uh, somebody is asking YouTube link. So probably Vinnie, you can put the YouTube link in the chat box, but I don't yes, see yes. why what's when somebody is already there in the session, why you should or ask for a YouTube link. Probably later on, you can send it to them that this is also available there for further use if you want to. Okay. So if nobody has any other question on this particular example, let me go to the next example. So these are an example from the primary level. Let me go to an example of a slightly higher level, relations and functions. This is a topic uh, in CBSC class nine. 
and the prerequisites for the topic relations and functions as specified by them. Okay, they should understand what is cross product of sets and what is the Cartesian system. These well, uh, there is another question by somebody saying, "What if students don't have any interest in mathematics learning? Mathematics learning." Ask them to leave mathematics and go home. Do pick up some other subject in which you have interest, but probably you are asked to by force. See, that is a problem with our lower classes. We are asked to study mathematics by force, right? So probably uh, I'm not saying that ask him to quit learning. I'm asking that learn the way probably in a more interactive way. So OT, are you a teacher? The person who has asked the question, Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what do you do normally if a student says he has no interest? What do you do? Mathematics is a core subject in my in my I area. I don't want so, to go to that. That is, if a student comes to you and says I have no interest in math learning, what you will do? I normally try to know why students don't have interest in mathematics to know the view why the actual cause of it. Yes, and then you try to probably remove that hindrance from that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so probably something like GeoGebra, which is more visual, may help because every student does not understand mathematics the same way, right? Some people understand if you talk to them properly. Some people understand if you show them something properly. Some people understand if you work out something analytically, right? There is a theory of multiple intelligences, probably. Uh, you should read something what is called theory of multiple intelligences and how that can be incorporated in your teaching of mathematics. Okay, that is very useful. Okay. So, okay, sir. Theory of multiple well, intelligences. Okay. And see whether that helps you. Let me go over to something now. Once again, back to my presentation. So, class nine, nine relations and functions. Uh, the prerequisites are cross products of sets, Cartesian products, uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So if the students does not have these two inputs, they cannot understand the of relations and functions. So these are the prerequisites. They are the blocks, building blocks for mathematics is not something each unit is not independent. It is built on the previous stage. So, step two, diagnostic. So, the hair probably, uh, I will ask you to do it on paper pencil. Uh, I don't want to go into GeoGebra too much so that you shouldn't think I am promoting GeoGebra, but it is a very wonderful tool. Supposing uh, the possible questions are you have the set A as one, two, and you have the set B as three, four, and five. Okay. So, now, Try to answer the questions which I would have put in the GeoGebra classroom, but I don't, don't want to do that. So here at present, everybody should try to work it out and put your answer in the chat box. So does one comma one belong to A cross B? So please put your answer in the chat box. Answer is either yes or no. As soon as I get 10 responses, I'll move in. So eight, I've already got, I think eight, if I'm counting the chat box properly. No, yes? No, sir, sir, one into one not belongs to A cross B. Yes, yes. So you already put your answer in the chat box, probably. So most of the people have said no. So that indicates that probably uh, these persons at least uh, understand and somebody has given the reason also one is not in the set b so right so that is much more uh, uh, categorical answer okay so let me what happened something okay so here is the next question it is, yeah does one comma one does the picture represent the point a cross b in this 
points are labeled a b c d e f h g h i j k l okay does the picture represents the point in a cross b answer is yes or no you have to put because i am testing how to represent ordered pair on the plane so the question is does the picture represent points on a cross b so vitu malik lenin they are saying yes so let me uh, you see this is also an opportunity for you to start something called something called uh, math talk in the classroom which is a important component of mathematics teaching so uh, uh, will uh, i want to ask one of you who is saying this picture okay does the picture represent this picture i hope the question is clear does this picture represent a cross b right okay so let me ask the question to uh, now let me start math talk in the classroom i want to pick up one student uh, who has answered the question okay uh, is puja uh, is Yes, sorry, I I jumped ahead in the chat box. Let me come slightly down. Okay, Lenin, are you there? Somebody using the name Lenin? Lenin. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so Lenin, you will. Uh, you said yes. This picture represents a cross B, right? Yeah. the actually i saw the first one uh, the points a b c d e f that represent a cross b but the points h uh, h j l g i k i that doesn't represent yeah so your answer is wrong you realize yeah, you... I, I, actually i should have uh, i read uh, hey, i'm so sorry so it's my fault no no it's okay realizing the mistake is half understanding the concept nimesh why did you say yes nimesh punjani Nimesh, are you there? Logged in, but not there. Puja Kadam, are you there? Yes, sir. Same as what Lenin said. Even okay. I realized it a little later. I'm sorry hey. about it. No, no, yeah, no, yeah. no question of being. No, sorry. because you know it was half read. Yeah. And so. <laughs> no, that is the lesson. Uh, that's how. Yes. That is the yes, lesson we should yes, tell our students. Exactly. Student. read the question pro properly think for a minute before answering we are not true, true. we are not playing kbc yes there is no hot seat here yes okay so let thank us, you sir yeah so let us go to the next question next question is in the picture which points are in the set a cross b so now by now almost everybody has realized what is the set a cross b okay so once the corrections were there so let me go over to in the picture which color points represent b cross a so the answer should be either red color or the blue color it's red sir red color red, right so you see i am trying to bring in from the students the knowledge whether they know how to plot a cross b points the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane and whether they know the difference between a cross b and b cross a i could have made this a slightly more complicated but so here is the question is a cross b equal to b cross a no sir so this pictorial representation will categorically tell the student a cross b is not b cross a not because a cross b is blue colored and b cross a is red colored it is or they are named differently it is because the coordinates if i look at a okay i can look at what is the, this is not a geogebra app let us only a picture uh, there if you click on a it will tell you what are the coordinates of a and what if you click at h it will tell you the coordinates of h that is the beauty of uh, geogebra it will make him understand a cross b is not equal to b cross a okay so possible gaps so the, these are the possible gaps visualizing ordered pairs 
having difficulty in plotting the points over here, ordered pairs. For both of these, one can have GeoGebra applets uh, giving the inputs. So let me, it's not difficult at all to either construct or pick up ready-made applets and bring it to your uh, teaching and learning process. For example, here is the input saying, what is A cross B? If I change A, I can change A. Or if I change in A, right? That is A is three, there is A is three. So, and here is the second coordinate B, I'm changing B. So how do you plot A and A comma B? That is one way of doing it, okay? Very simple uh, graphical ways of showing this is possible using applets. Probably you should give uh, your students an uh, assignment. So for example, here you say, here you can enter the point instead of sliders, you can enter the point you want, two comma three, okay? You, you know, want to know where is the point, two comma three, you click and it gives you the point two comma three on the, so plotting the point two comma three. You can change two point, okay, if you want minus two point minus one. I made a mistake, so I should have done one. So from there, that point, you should go here, to get that point. So if you want, what are the points? You can have a list of points, which I am doing two by <clears throat> two comma three minus two comma one. So these are the ways of uh, bringing students who don't like mathematics, okay? They don't like to plot, but there is a visualization. There is the process, visualizing a process, how to go from one place to another. So that we should uh, motivate a student to So this is the possible gaps, just in time inputs. I will show these applets and uh, try to probably ask them to plot some points and, okay. Anybody has a question till now? Because I, I want to do- Seven questions. Yeah? Sir, how we can represent uh, equivalent relation in uh, graph? You want to do it in a GeoGebra? Yes, sir. So make an applet. Yes, sir. Make an applet yourself. You will learn how to do it instead of. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Or okay, sir. do one thing. Go to Geo. So let me uh, go to the place and uh, tell you how to. If you want to uh, avoid doing a lot of work, short of time. So. Okay, sir. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. No, no. So this is for everybody. Go to the site, georgebra.org, okay? So that is a site where a lot of things are available. You can create your own site. I have logged in, I, this is my profile. Under my profile, uh, various things are available, okay? So you can create and uh, use for yourself. Let us uh, search, you can search the resources here, okay? So what was equal installations? So equivalent fractions, equivalent relations. Let us see if something is available. If not, then we have to, there no other reason. Uh, no, my spellings were wrong. Relations, let us see. Okay. Here is, you see the material, equivalence relations. See what is useful for you and see whether you can use that or not. So this is on the GeoGebra site, GeoGebra.org, you can enter, uh, you can search relations and then probably read on relations, okay? So let me not go too much into it. Let me come back to my, process. So uh, either you can search, something will be available on the internet and it is free to download. Nobody minds it if you download it and modify it and use it. That is the beauty of GeoGebra. 
you don't pay anything for downloading something made by others okay the idea is precisely that you should make teaching and learning of mathematics easier and interesting for students okay All right so there is uh, i don't know how many uh, students or how many people are there of the level teaching uh, class 12 okay but everybody uh, should be able to understand that or hopefully by the end of it will understand the concept of intervals of increase and decrease of function okay so what are the prerequisites for that notions of increasing and decreasing of a function and the notion of derivative these are the two things required to analyze the notion of intervals of increase or decrease of a function and its and applications of derivative for that okay so what could be a possible diagnostic test can somebody say what what could be a possible diagnostic test for this what you should start thinking as a teacher what should be the diagnostic test what should include what should be the diagnostic to understand increasing or decreasing what should i have in my what should be sir the with, first derivative sir the first derivative is greater than 0 that is the result what i am saying is to diagnose whether the students know the concept of increasing and decreasing what you will do in your classroom how will you diagnose whether the students know that or not we can use example of a staircase okay good very good so what you will do with the staircase uh, so we can say that if it is a increasing function it's like we are going from first floor to the second floor and show them how a staircase looks like mm -hmm. and if it we are explaining a decreasing function we can show that they, we are coming from the second floor to the first floor so this is how a function may look like what is a function there is no function you have told me i uh, so would like to know you are saying staircase is a increasing function when you are going up it doesn't make sense to me you have to say something more sir maybe the uh, one function can be fx equal to x and another example be fx equal to minus x so what you will do with fx x equal to x and f of x equal to minus x what do you want to do so we can show that in the x axis if we are going from let us say point 1 to 2 in the y axis also we are going up so that is you are not testing you are showing it yeah so my question is to diagnose whether is to and knows what what will you do sir uh, uh, yes. can we show some can we show different graphs of increasing and decreasing function and ask yes. the students which one is increasing function and which one is decreasing function good you are on the thing now right on the track of thinking i want to ask a student so you present f of x is equal to x and you present f of x equal to minus x and then ask the question is any one of these functions increasing is any one of the functions decreasing right and see their answers that will tell you whether the student knows increasing and decreasing okay so designing a diagnostic test will itself give you and input into the possible hindrances the students can have you have to make that question very clear to you uh, very clear to the student right so fx equal to x as somebody said give a graph two graphs and ask can we do it on a single graph sin x sin x very good so what will be the question in which range it is increasing and in which range it is decreasing what do you mean by range points what? on the x axis function is not increasing and decreasing on a point it is in an interval so very careful increasing decreasing is a property of a function
function over an interval not at a point. Continuity is at a point. Differentiability is at a point. Increasing is decreasing is not at a point. It is a property of function on an interval. This is again a mistake we make. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? You give the yes, graph. Sir. So how what will be your question? Modified question. Give the graph sin x and and tell ask, the and tell ask, the interval which interval in which the question in what intervals the function is increasing, in what intervals the function is decreasing. Right? That is the proper way of doing it. Okay. So possible diagnostic test. So let me. Uh, so intervals of increase or decrease at a point. Okay. I am going to give you another way of testing which you can use in the classroom. I showed you GeoGebra classroom, and here is uh, another one. Try to. Uh, can you click on this uh, picture? Uh, okay. Let me. Uh, just a minute, let me put sir, the link. Yeah. Sir, uh, it is almost time up. So if you can conclude. You said two, two hours, no? 10 minutes more? It is 525 almost. 525. 525. Okay, 525. good. So I'll, I'll stop a diagnostic. Um, and go to, okay. So is everybody able to see, copy? and put in the chat box to everyone, please. Yes. So I put a link in the chat box. If you want, you can click on this QR code here and you'll be taken to something. Have you done that? Uh, already some people have started answering the questions. So uh, this is true false uh, kind of a question. Okay. I, I present a graph and ask the question, the function is increasing or decreasing in this or not. Okay. So this is what is called Mentimeter. On the site Mentimeter, you can create free quizzes free, right? Without any paying anything. I have, that is what I have done. I have created three quizzes and I'm presenting it to you. And online, you do it and I can see your responses. Okay? So these are the answers. This function is increasing in this, function is decreasing in this, and so on. So uh, I think uh, the time has come for me to stop because Vinny has given an ultimatum saying that please stop uh, doing whatever you're doing. So let me come back. So these are diagnostic tests and students will know. You will know whether they know. You can also check differentiability at a point. Um, their website I can take you to or uh, quizzes, objective type. Okay. Very interesting quizzes are there possible. Okay. So let me stop here and uh, take you back. Stop presenting and uh, take you back to the room. And uh, already, uh, because of my presentation, around 30 people have dropped out of the presentation. So there were 90 to begin with, 30 got bored of mathematics, I was uh, telling them. So, Excuse me, sir. Yeah, so, so uh, there was a, sir, there was a PDF that you had given no on learning loss that didn't open. So can you, uh, is it possible to put the link again on learning loss? That was uh, Rajya Sabha thing or which one was Yes, it? yes, Rajya Sabha thing. Okay, I'll, I'll, try to, I'll try to show you the website. 
Somebody, lot of noise coming. So please let me trace where is that. I'm taking you back to whatever I have said. Uh, where is the Rajya Sabha thing? You want the link of that? Yes, sir. This one? This is a slide? Oh, you can't see the slide. Let no, me no, we can't see the slide. Let me share the screen again. And uh, is this the slide? Yes, sir. Yes. But yes. this uh, this HTPT, uh, TTPS you have put, no, that doesn't open to this site. Okay. Ah, this okay. Site. I just clicked and it opened. So, okay. so just download it. Here is the yeah. long, I, I had shortened it so that uh, you don't have to bother too much about it. But if you like, I will copy it and uh, yes, put it in Yes, there. put it, sir. Copy. And where is the chat? Where is the chat box? And here is the, yes. so here is the link. Okay. Yeah. Anything else from the slides you want? Otherwise, I will close the sharing thing and go back. So last slide, kya thi? Last slide, kya thi? Okay, I don't know. Last slide. What, what I was showing you, right? Last slide. Okay, last slide. Let me see what was the last slide. Yeah, this was the one. This has two applets. One is about increasing, decreasing, and the other is increasing and sign of the derivative. Both are very interesting applets. So let me just uh, probably open this for you and uh, you can try to make it yourself or here is something. You like something going up, right? So this is the interval is showing here. This is the interval in which it is increasing, right? And then it to increasing, and now it is decreasing. Okay, so up to here it is decreasing, and then again increasing. So then you have to come over and say that as you move move from left to right, you are going up. That is increasing. As you move from left to right, you are coming down. So that is decreasing. As you move from left to right, okay and then you are going up, then that is uh, increasing, okay? So that was the applet on uh, increasing, decreasing, and here is the side derivative. That is slightly more, uh, you know, slightly more interesting, and slightly more uh, whether you know the relation between, so these are three graphs given to you. One is the function, other is the derivative, and the third is the second derivative. So you have to point out which is the first derivative, which is the second derivative, what is the function. So you can see that the, in the interval, uh, so this is the uh, function where a derivative is f dash x is bigger than zero. This is the derivative bigger than zero. There the function is increasing and so on. Sign of the derivative. So uh, normally in a calculus class, I show this, ask them to uh, uh, sort of, do this thing, and then they come out with the theorem, the sign of the derivative is related with the, uh, the increasing, decreasing of the function. So let me stop here. Yeah, somebody has a question to ask. Uh, I'll stop sharing. The yeah, participants, if you all have any questions, please uh, pose your questions. Orally, uh, you can unmute your mic and ask. We have a few minutes for questions. Excuse me, sir. I want to ask one question. I want one favor from you, basically. So, if you have any recorded videos of your sessions, of your classes, can you share it with us? Um, I would like to have some calculus videos. Okay. So, uh, do one thing. Uh, I think calculus is...
available on YouTube. Uh, there is NPTEL uh, search for name and the see under this uh, project we have developed video courses on various things so try to uh, find out whether any video course is available on calculus okay. okay sir can you share your email id also if i, I have any query i, can I just i just now shared that ikerana at gmail i'll put it again i had put it so ikerana at the rate gmail right so youtube has about four courses uh, in the video format right it is for, for the national project on technology analysis learning so it is okay. or you can search my name and uh, videos by inder kerana it will give you various links to various things and see what is useful for you okay sir thank you so much Okay. So kind of you. Anybody else has a question to ask about this or anything else that I can help you with in teaching and learning? No. So Vinny, over to you. Yeah, Anybody thank else? you, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir, for your enlightening uh, uh, input. And uh, we will now move on to the next section of this program where. Our students present a small research study that we have done. So over to Samantha and Ria to quickly present the research study. Thank you, everybody, and uh, take care. Sir, please wait for this uh, presentation also. I'm not able to access camera. Oh. So welcome to this survey, which we have conducted on mathematics counseling. So to begin with, we would like by asking what is mathematics counseling? So all of us know that the concept of counseling is not very new to us, but have we ever heard of mathematics counseling? So one might wonder what these terms mean. Mathematics counseling is when a teacher takes up the role as a counselor while teaching. So what does this mean? It simply means that the teacher is not intimidating or strict, but is very considerate towards the students and encourages them to ask questions in class. The teacher is aware of the individual differences that exist among students and strives to cater to the needs of each student by implementing innovative methods and strategies and having one-to-one -one conversation with the students regarding the difficulties they face. Now, what is the need for mathematics counseling? Today, parents and teachers have high expectations from students, especially with regards to their marks. The belief that scoring out of marks in subjects like math and science is easy compared to other subjects puts undue pressure on the students, which in turn might lead to problems such as math phobia, lack of interest in mathematics, etc. Mathematics counseling helps in overcoming all such issues as it makes students aware of their potential and develops among them an interest for learning mathematics. So the first question was, I talk, I talk to the students about how to achieve better mathematics. Almost 94.6% of the teachers agree with this statement. Because it is essential for a mathematics teacher to talk to the students, not, not only with regards regard to regard strategies for achieving better in mathematics, but also to develop a liking for the subject. The second question is, I make the teaching interactive so that the students can ask questions during the mathematics class. 69.9% .9 of the teachers strongly agree while 28.3% teachers agree with this statement. A mathematics teacher should always ensure that the class is interactive so that students feel free to ask questions during the class. Asking questions and seeking answers to them will help students deepen their knowledge and understanding of a given topic. I try to assess what could be the problem that students are facing in the mathematics class. 66.3% of the teachers say that they always assess the problems faced by students in the mathematics class. 
25.3% say they do it frequently while 8.4% of the teachers do it only sometimes a mathematics teacher should always make it a point to assess the problems faced by the students during the mathematics class the teacher should find out the causes of these problems and help students find solutions in order to overcome it the fourth question is i am very strict about mathematics tasks assigned in the class 19.3% teachers strongly agree 44.6% teachers agree 28.3% choose to be neutral but very few teachers disagree with this statement a teacher should avoid both extremes that is being too lenient and being very strict instead be approachable to the students the role of a teacher whenever a task is assigned in class should be that of a facilitator so that the students do not hesitate to ask doubts and get them clarified simply because the teacher is strict an extremely strict teacher can also develop a phobia for mathematics and create disinterest among the students with regards to the subject i welcome students mistake with a smile 40.4% of the teachers strongly agree 49.4% agree while 8.4% teachers prefer to be neutral about this statement there's a famous quote which goes like this mistakes have the power to turn you into something better than you were before a teacher should always welcome students mistake with a smile and ensure that the students do not feel offended for making the mistake a teacher should help students analyze their mistakes and also motivate encourage and guide them to find the right solution for the same i prefer not to interact with students who do not pay attention in my class 34.9% of the teachers strongly disagree 52.4% disagree while only a few say that they agree with this statement a teacher should not neglect and ignore the students who don't participate in class instead find out the underlying reasons for such behavior a teacher should always try out different strategies to make the topic interesting and engage the students by integrating games role plays quizzes art etc so that all students pay attention in class i try to work out ways to improve mathematical skills in my students 62.7% of the teachers strongly agree while 35.5% teachers agree with this statement a mathematics teacher should always try out different ways to improve mathematical skills in the students this may include game based learning connecting math to daily life focusing on one concept at a time etc i talk to parents about how to help students in mathematics at home 44% of the teachers always talk to parents about helping students with mathematics at home 30.7% say they do it frequently while 22.9% sometimes make an effort in this direction teachers should always collaborate with parents and encourage them to create a conducive learning environment at home without instilling in them a fear towards mathematics by expecting excellent grades the council in school is especially asked to address problems in mathematics learning 48.2% of the teachers say that the council in their schools is asked to address problems in mathematics learning 27.1% disagree with the statement whereas 24.7% teachers say that there is no counselor in their school the school counselor should not only deal with psychological issues of the students but also guide them with the difficulties faced in mathematics apart from the counselor for pro promoting quality education the teacher should guide and counsel the students even outside the classroom i link mathematics learning to psychological variables along with intellectual variables 26.5% of the teachers strongly agree 51.8% agree while 17.5% teachers choose to be neutral about the statement teachers should always link mathematics learning to psychological variables along with intellectual variables for the holistic development of the students my focus on mathematics learning is to help students face challenges in life around 92.8% of the teachers agree with the statement while solving problems teachers should encourage the students to look at the bigger picture and correlate the learning experiences with their day to day lives 
this approach will not only help students to solve problems in mathematics but also prepare them to face challenges in life mathematics brings more distance between the teacher and the student as it is impossible to cater to each one of them 66.3% of the teachers disagree whereas 21.7% agree with this statement teachers must understand that every child in the classroom is unique and has her or his own pace of learning hence a teacher should adopt creative teaching strategies so that students with different needs learn best some of these strategies could be differentiated instruction capitalizing on learning styles capitalizing on students interests using computerized instructions etc i do not think counseling can help students in mathematics 13.3% of the teachers agree while 63.3% disagree with the statement they say happiness is not the absence of problems it's the ability to deal with them mathematics counseling can certainly help students over overcome the various issues like math phobia and lack of interest in mathematics it can help students to recognize their own potential and exploit it to the best of their ability I have maintained a reflective journal on how I need to help my students in mathematics. Fifty-two point four percent of the teachers agree, while forty-seven point six percent teachers disagree with this statement. It is essential for mathematics teachers to maintain a reflective journal where they can note their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats about teaching the subject. The practice of maintaining a reflective journal religiously. will help teachers to devise ways and strategies to help their students develop an interest in mathematics the thrust of my teaching is to collect data about the mathematical skills that need to be developed 30.1% teachers strongly agree 48.8% agree whereas 18.7% choose to be neutral about this statement apart from transacting the content knowledge teachers should also strive to develop certain mathematical skills like representation spatial sense measurement estimation pattern and problem solving among the students i have a one to one talk with my students who need help 95.8% of the teachers agree with the statement while only a few disagree a teacher has to be a friend guide philosopher and a nurse to her students as nature was to wordsworth students should feel free to approach the teacher with their doubts and the teacher in turn should appreciate the students asking questions and in and outside the class i talk to my colleagues for new ideas and techniques for helping my students 66.9% of the teachers say that they talk to their colleagues for new ideas and techniques to help students in students whereas 30.7% say they do not at times a teacher should frequently engage in conversation with her colleagues in order to know new ideas and techniques to help her students teacher can also be a part of various mathematics groups or association or even collaborate with international mathematics teacher and keep themselves updated so that they can deliver to their students only what is best this was the end of our presentation thank you I would request Lalin to give the feedback instructions and then Meral to propose the vote of thanks. Lalin, uh, just a moment, ma'am. Just a moment. Yeah. So, a gentle reminder to all participants present here: link for the feedback form. form will send in the chat box of the zoom meeting and in the youtube chat now kindly fill it to get the e certificates please note that we are keeping the form open till 7:30 pm so all the participants are requested to form uh, fill the feedback form before 7:30 pm once again please note till 7:30 pm we are uh, accepting the form while filling the form make sure that you enter your correct email address or the certificate will not be delivered to you and also enter your name correctly because no changes would be done later if you don't receive your certificate please wait for 30 minutes and do check your spam folder after 30 minutes if you are still unable to get the certificates then kindly contact any one of the student coordinators regarding the issue thank you i hope you understood 
um, participants, please note that there won't be any links put up in the WhatsApp group. It will only be on the Zoom and the YouTube. Are inviting Neeral for the vote of thanks. As we, the students of SXI, are preparing ourselves for becoming future mathematics teacher, we are extremely grateful to Dr. Inder K. Rani, a resource person for today's webinar, for taking time out of his busy schedule and lightening the flame of knowledge within us. We are thank. We also thank a principal in charge, Dr. Gita Shetty, teacher in charge, Dr. Vini Sebastian, for always encouraging and supporting us to do, to do the magic. The greater, the better, the more. I would like to extend my grateful gratitude to all our students coordinators for the immense efforts in organizing and coordinating this webinar. And last but not the least, we thank you all dear participants for spending your valuable time with us and making this webinar a success by incorporating all the strategies and solutions uh, that we have learned from this webinar series, let us all share to make a difference to the mathematics teaching learning process and drive the fear of maths out of our students. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You can fill the feedback Excuse form. Excuse me, ma'am. Feedback yeah. form link has not been shared in the chat box. It has been shared. Please check. So share it once again. Able to see it? Hello? Students can yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have got it. Thank you.